talk to Dr. Tarpley here. Uh, China is saying it's the end of the dollar. The world is moving away from the dollar quickly. Uh, th th they're talking about now that the downgrade's beginning, that the U.S. is basically technically defaulting, and th they're reporting that hundreds of cities, towns, counties, states, um, dozens of states are on the verge of going completely bankrupt. But this is all fraudulent bankruptcy because 90-plus percent of the debt is induced debt that we were signed onto by the Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan mafia that put their politicians in, in the House, Senate, and, of course, the Obama administration. Bush passed the baton over to them. And so no one is really debating the elephant in the room except for people like Dr. Tarpley. And we, we predicted it all 100 percent, said within two to three years this would happen in Obama deception, fall of the republic. Here we are two and a half, three years later. Webster Tarpley, thank you for joining us. Alex, how are you doing? I'm not doing too good. I live here. <laughs> I love my family. Uh, I'm watching these criminals. Sit up there, uh, Geithner saying we, you know, we would never lose our AAA rating, knowing full well once they got the Super Congress in, they were going to bring us deeper into receivership. Tarpley, welcome. Thank you. Well, this is what, what we what we talked about. It's a depression. It is a breakdown crisis. It's a disintegration of the entire system, not just a collapse of prices, but institutions that cease to exist uh, all over the place. Uh, right now, there's a there's a whiff of panic, right? It just crashed through four, 400, minus 400 on the Dow. Uh, let's go back to last week. We had this crisis around the debt ceiling. Uh, I regarded this crisis as totally unnecessary, reckless, irresponsible. We had a, a lot of wild talk from ideologues about how the U.S. could default. It wouldn't matter. Uh, that is very foolish. The, the U.S. Treasury securities are the bedrock of the economy of this entire planet. Uh, it's not a good system. I don't like this system, but I, I wouldn't say junk the system and then go off the cliff. I don't think that that's good policy. So what happened last week was this fear about the U.S. default drove a lot of people to dump government bonds around the world. That would be especially Italian bonds, because Italy had been under attack since about July 11th, Spanish bonds and other bonds, along with U.S. bonds to some extent, but not that much. The money then flowed into Switzerland, Japan, and Germany, driving up their uh, currencies and making their exports uh, harder to buy. Not good for these countries either. They're very, very worried about it. So we had a situation where Italy and Spain were big targets. Now, we've also got this European August uh, vacation break. The volumes in the, in the bond markets of Italy, Spain, are quite low at this time of year. A perfect occasion for the hedge fund hyenas and the zombie bankers to come in and attack using credit default swaps. The Europeans had a chance last year to outlaw credit default swaps when Germany, Schäuble, the finance minister, talked about it. They decided not to do that. They also talked about having a, a Tobin tax, a turnover tax on these finance oligarchs. They didn't do that. So they were sitting there pretty much exposed to the attack. And that then got the Spanish and, and Italian bonds going down. That, in turn, raises the issue, well, maybe the euro will blow up, and then, of course, the dollar might, fall, might also blow up in some combination. Uh, what you then saw was a lot of European banks were going to the brink. If you look at uh, Commerzbank of Germany, you look at Société Générale of France, Barclays of Britain, and some others, these banks are under a lot of pressure. There, a, lot of, a lot of European institutions are dumping U.S. stocks, and they're also dumping futures contracts in the oil market. The reason that oil is going down has a lot to do with, with the fact that that price is mostly speculation. And when the, when the speculators get in trouble, they've got to liquidate their positions to get into cash. So that's sort of the, the technical side of it. Now, in the middle of this, Standard and Poor's, uh, the, the fact that this institution even exists today is a tribute to the impotence of uh, the whole, what can we say, criminal justice system. They have been transferred by the big banks who basically set these groups up. They've been transferred the power of Congress actually rating itself. So it, it creates the false idea that, that, that oligarchical bankers uh, set the destiny and the credit and faith of your right. country. Are they not really the true dictators uh, now of our country, S&P, Moody's, and others, who are made up of a revolving door 
of the big six zombie bank uh, executives. Exactly. I was thinking this morning when I heard that, that Standard & Poor's was making ultimatums again to the United States. Standard & Poor's this morning says, we may downgrade you again, so watch out. And we demand immediate fiscal action. In other words, we demand genocidal budget cuts. My God. They demand shock therapy. Never cut the trillions the bankers are stealing. Never prosecute themselves right. for the derivatives fraud. Cut your Social Security. And again, it's a fiat economy. It is a dependency economy. But once you're into that, it's the only economy you have. Even as Ron Paul has said, you'd have to phase out of this stuff over decades. You cut all of these, all of these uh, safety nets out, we will go into a total road warrior depression instantly with riots in the streets, with... 45 to 50 million people on food stamps and what is S&P and others saying? They're openly saying slash it all, which is known as the IMF riot in their own documents where they want the riots to begin to further cause uh, absolute destruction of any institution so the banks can then come in behind it and literally set up mercenary warlords and fully conquer us. I, I would say my, my feeling this morning was the ratings agencies are acting like Hitler. They're basically, Hitler used to say, this is my last territorial demand in Europe. And S&P says, well, this is my last uh, demand for genocidal austerity for this month. Uh, it's time to fight back. The United States is under attack. That's the only way to look at this. This is now political. Uh, the, the gesture by S&P is completely political. And these, if the other ratings agencies, now we've got two more Damocles swords. We've got Fitch and we've got Moody's. What are they going to do? I think it's time to investigate these entities. What are their conflicts of interest? How many of them are shorting U.S. Treasury bonds? How many of them have relatives who are shorting yeah, insider US trading. Treasury bonds? Exactly, insider trading. If those guys that you saw from S&P on all the, sh the television shows yesterday, if, that, if they were talking about stocks, if they were telling you to, to buy a stock, then they'd have to put up a chart that says, does this analyst own the stock? Do relatives own the stock? Do they provide services? Are they shorting? All the rest of this stuff. Somehow, these people seem to be above the law. S&P runs wild. They, the, the Treasury, and I think they're right, Geithner says, they made a $2 trillion error. If they make a $2, $2 trillion error, where's the accountability? What are they going to say? Too bad if you lost your life savings. We're sorry. But that's Already just a you. dance they're doing. Geithner's totally controlled by the very same crew, as you know, Webster, expanding on oh, that. But he's telling you the truth, that, they're, that they're, their analysis is worthless. Now, just think back to 2008. Those same ratings agencies, the three that we're talking about, they were, were giving AAA ratings to every piece of toxic derivative junk in Wall Street up until five seconds before... What, the ultimate bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers or what? Yeah, that was, was the sucker play. Now they're in the implosion a angle. And that leads me to my next question. Three weeks ago, you talked, because you read Italian, you speak Italian, th that, that, they were, uh, that they were subpoenaing Moody's and, and, and S&P in Italy. Now we read last Friday that they did raid them. And so you're saying that's the same thing here. Raid their hind ends now. Yes, exactly. Get, get, the, get the FBI going. Get the, get the Department of Justice, the Secret Service. I think still works for the Treasury, or could, uh, there, there's got to be an immediate investigation. And the only way to do that is you've got to determine, is there a criminal conspiracy going on involving uh, various hedge fund operators who are in collusion with these, with these agencies? And by the way, Webster, uh, this is a big deal for those that don't know. This is one of the biggest things we've seen in decades uh, the fact that for the first time in modern history we're being downgraded, that means now that it's going to spread as a contagion to states, counties, and cities, and already has. So right. the very same hedge fund hyenas can now loan these counties and states and cities back citizen banker bailout money at exorbitant interest prices. Right. They're, they're driving, this is basically a, a conspiracy to raise the interest rates. In other words, to gouge the American people more. Right now here in the, in the Washington area, right, everybody in Virginia and Maryland is waiting because we were told already by the ratings agencies that if the U.S. Treasury debt is downgraded, since Virginia and Maryland depend so much on the federal budget because of the, the, the nature of the regional economy, that the Maryland and, and uh, Virginia bonds will also be downgraded. I think they're both uh, AAA. But what are we talking about? The current situation is a dictatorship. It looks like this. At the top of the dictatorship... We have the, the, the triumvirate 
of S and P, Fitch, and Moody's, and they they hand down their decisions. They say we demand four trillion of genocidal budget cuts. We demand more budget cuts. Then those orders are going to go to the twelve tyrants. That's the super committee or the super congress. I call them the twelve tyrants. A good term drawn from Greek and Egyptian history. The twelve tyrants, and we're getting some some word about who they might turn out to be. The 12 tyrants are going to report around Thanksgiving, and then between Thanksgiving and December, Christmas basically, the Congress is going to be forced to vote on this. This is modeled on the BRAC, the Base Realignment and Closing Committee, although it's a, a qualitatively different uh, level of operations, because this is now running the entire economy. You look yeah, at the BRAC, before it was just they were deciding what bases to close. Now this is all the spending and cutting bills not coming out of the, the House and individual members. It's coming out of the Committee of 12 with Obama as the 13th. Right, and this will be a secret committee. You know, in Venice, in Venice they had the Council of Ten, right? The Council of Ten was the hated and feared secret intelligence agency of the, of the Venetians. This is now the Council of Twelve. And the idea is that they're going to come up with their list of genocidal budget cuts, and it'll be take it or leave it. Look at what the BRAC did. Last week, we had a tragic event here in Washington, D.C. Walter Reed Army Hospital, which was the best facility in the world if you had um, paraplegics coming in, people who had lost arms, legs, limbs in the various wars. It's a tragedy, of course, but Walter Reed Army Hospital had developed the best, the very best team in the world in terms of, of, of getting those guys back on, on the path to recovery. Now, that, that entire hospital has been shut down. It's destroyed. They say they're moving it to Bethesda Naval Medical Center. It just won't be the same. And it also means that there's one fewer hospital in the District of Columbia, where the, the district has been losing hospitals continuously. Now, what the 12 tyrants are going to do, they will do the same thing to the U.S. economy that the BRAC did to Walter Reed Army Hospital. And it is. And imagine what the lobbyists will do. Imagine the power. And we're already seeing Obama give health care waivers to his friends and GEs exempt from carbon taxes. Imagine the, the power this gives the oligarchy. Now they're not having to buy off 500 members of, of the House and Senate of the Congress. Now they just go to 12 super tyrants. And now we learn it was never about raising the debt limit. It was all about getting this agreement for the crisis that they were about to stage. I think it's it's imperative now that that uh, legal action um, emerge against these 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 entities. The United States of America is the most powerful modern state. The United States could reach out and crush these agencies like cockroaches simply using the you know the well-known track record. Look look what they did in But instead their operatives run the government so they're they're taming the giant. We are now kneeling to the one inch goblin that is, you know, the, the, that is the new world order and we're being taught and the Chinese are getting to buggy whip us and talk about how the dollar's dead yeah. and, and it's all part of our humiliation. Yeah, I, I would also say on this, uh, it's time to stand up for the United States. Uh, Putin says the United States is a parasite. This is wrong. I'm sorry, Putin. Think again. Wall Street is a parasite, but if you look at the U.S. economy, let's just look at U.S. food production. The U.S. family farm, the grain and the corn that the U.S. produces, is the basis of the entire world food market. It's the only thing that's preventing whole zones of the world from going into absolute famine and genocide. So let's not overdo it on the U.S. parasitism. Wall Street is a parasite. There's no doubt about that. But there's also a productive economy here, which we could... We Wall could Street is the parasite that's grown globally powerful from sucking our blood. It's the too big to fail instead of it telling us that we uh, are, are bankrupt and we are scum. And, and jumping on this global bandwagon, uh, we have to expose that they are the parasites. And the other thing is the Chinese. Now, there is this, this ratings agency, which is sort of a fly-by-night operation. I don't know what it is. Is it a Tong? Is it a branch of the People's Liberation Army? I don't know who they are. I don't care about, I don't like their ratings agencies any more than I like the ones here. It's time for China to butt out of the internal affairs of the United States. I don't want to hear advice from the Chinese about what kind of genocidal budget cuts we need to have. No, sorry. And those crybabies, they should think now, if, if they went into the market and bought U.S. Treasury bonds, you know very well if you buy a bond in the market, it's a marketable bond. It goes up and down. It fluctuates. 
You can't come crying to say, oh, I made an investment and then it went down. Too bad. That was a very foolish Well, by bad-mouthing the investment, they're only devaluing their previous investment, and that's what's so scary about this. Yeah. As the U.S. goes under, if people think Greece is sucking Europe down, if the U.S. goes under, we are looking at a total worldwide depression. Again, I would not blame Greece. This is not Greece. This is a, an attack by the hedge fund hyenas organized in a conspiratorial meeting in a Manhattan townhouse. But Webster, I wasn't blaming Greece. I'm saying if people think Greece and the bankers robbing it is causing problems in Europe, imagine what the U.S. going under would look like. Okay, now, just in, in terms of that Italian judge, right, Ruggiero, he's, he's doing things. Now, the Greeks, speaking of the Greeks, the Greeks have just banned short selling in the Athens stock market for the next two months. This is the wave of the future. It was when you're attacked by speculators and their ratings agencies and this whole cabal of, of financial interest, you gotta fight back. The modern state has to fight back. Um, one of the things you could say is, isn't S&P and aren't these ratings agencies really a supranational institution? Could the United States not defend itself using something like the Trading with the Enemy Act? I've talked about the need to start a new Tea Party, and the TEA in my Tea Party is Trading with the Enemy Act, which allows you to then say, look, we're, we're being attacked. The, our our uh, markets and our, our economic life. By the way, th this is something bombs, bombs can't even do. It's so destructive. They are attacking us. The people that AAA rated known crud totally run by the mega banks are now doing this so they can prey upon us even more. It is absolutely, the Federal Reserve is an enemy operation. This whole thing is an outside financial uh, paramilitary takeover, and I say arrest all of them right now for Good. sedition and attempted overthrow of this country. I think that's what it is. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are just... Um uh, uh, the country is under attack, and at that point, you've got to really do what you need to do. Now, the other thing is, what, what may these characters be, be, uh, be, be preparing next? We have the following situation. Greece, Portugal, and Ireland are already receiving European bailouts from this crazy fund. It's a very misguided fund. should not have been done. Which is our money again, but then we get blamed for everything. Well, yeah, I don't know. The, somewhat... That's not quite so clear cut, but it's a it's a it's a lunatic policy. But this means that that the speculators have turned away from the original trio of Greece, uh, Portugal, and, and Ireland, at least for the moment. They had then lifted and shifted to Italy and Spain, starting on July 11th, especially with Italy, and then crescendo last week. Um, at the moment. They seem to be looking, as one guy on CNBC was saying this morning, the sharks, the hedge fund hyenas, are looking for new victims, and who might that be? The p probable uh, sequence is something like this. First comes Belgium. Of the northern European countries, the one with the most vulnerable bond markets is Belgium. And again, if there are any Belgian government officials listening in, guys, ban credit default swaps now ban shorting of your government bonds, and you will protect yourself. After Belgium, France, and now you're striking at the very heart of the European Union, the, the French-German uh, relation. So if the French come under this attack, I think even even with a, with a, a, a no-good nick like Sarkozy in power, something is going to have to give. And somebody in Europe is going to have to say, are we just going to sit here and be raped? Or are we going to fight back? And we'll see, right? They may lie down, play dead, roll over, whatever it is, or they may fight back. And the All right, Webster. takes the form of the ban on credit default swaps. Do five more minutes. I am completely freaked out. I mean, I'm not just up here saying we're in deep trouble, uh, you know, because it's fun to do on radio. I mean, th this is this is happening worse and faster than I thought. I want to have you back up in the next few days to do a whole hour on, on what's happening and also solutions. But briefly in the time we've got left, Webster, I know that you are a learned man who I respect. And I've done a lot of research myself, so I know bona fide when I see it. And I believe in a lot of your solutions. Once we've gotten to this collectivist system, you know, there's only one way to extricate yourself out, and that isn't pay everything to the bankers. I get all that. But they're not going to do what you've said. They're not going to do what other economists have warned about. They're not going to do what Dr. Roberts talks about with, with truly investing in domestic production. Uh, that's not happening. So 
with the runaway p crazies we've got running things uh, and bankers who've said they want to implode this country to consolidate it, where are they taking us? Where are we going to be next week, a month from now, a year from now, if th th we don't change course? Well, I would say, first of all, on the euro side, there, there's going to be a, a concerted attempt to, to uh, escalate the euro crisis between now and the end of the month of August. Because, again, this is the month when everybody in southern Europe, be it Italy, Spain, Bavaria, right, any place that's Catholic uh, by about August 15th, they shut down just about completely. Uh, Germany, somewhat the same thing, even in the, in the northern parts. So you have very low volumes in these bond markets. Perfect time for the hedge fund hyenas from New York and London to come in and make their attacks using credit default swaps. So look for the, the attack on the euro will escalate. And again, Belgium and then France. And then it's at, at the point that France comes under attack, I hope people will realize this is indeed a world economic depression. That's their side. Now, on the U.S. side, remember, the Depression comes in three waves, right? 1929 is a crash, 1931 a European banking crisis. Then it comes back to the U.S. as a terminal banking panic, 1932-1933. So we're now in the second wave of the current Depression. But you can already see what the third wave, or the, whatever it's going to be called, the third wave looks like banking crash here. Take a look at the bank stocks today, as you say, led by Bank of America with uh, these other places, Genworth, Citibank. Uh, look at those European banks I mentioned before, but in particular the U.S. ones and the British ones. Look for something dramatic to happen there. Who is the next Lehman Brothers? Who is the next Bear Stearns? Uh, there are lots of candidates. Again, just pick up any any uh, website about the, the, the bank stocks. And, you'll and the Super Congress the has the power to give them more zombie bank bailouts now. Right. Well, we, the other, that's the other thing is why is this happening now? One of the things is the Obama stimulus, uh, rotten as it was, still had some effect. And QE2, rotten as that was, at least propped up the, the zombie banks and the hedge fund hyenas. Now, the stimulus is over. The QE2 is over. And they're confronted with the fact that we're, in a, we're still in the Depression. The other thing is the, the Dodd-Frank FinReg was supposed to solve these problems. The Dodd-Frank FinReg from a year ago is an absolute obscene joke. It didn't do anything. Time to go back and have a real FinReg. But, uh, All right, Webster. Thank you. We're going to have you back up in the next few days.